They have stage 13 today and you're getting yourself ready. I am indeed stage 13, Bastille Day. And I'm off onto the caravan today. What's the plan? What are you doing on the caravan? I'm going to throw bottles at French, 500 milliliter bottles at the French as I pass by. I'm wondering if I need to take earplugs or should. cocaine because they look like they're on drugs at times, them people. Party drugs. Okay, we're here at the retail stand with Flora. So each day, uh, six people uh, win the jump on the caravan with the retail. Just random people. If they want to go, they go. There's clearly a bit of a distance you're going to keep from the caravan in front. You have the Kawasaki motorbike zooming in and out, controlling where the caravan can be, can't be, the distances. We're just coming up to the first hairpins of the day. It's good fun. I think this car has probably got the best stand brake and the gearbox in the world. I dread to think what he's up to. Anyway, that ca that caravan, it's it's infectious. It's seeing so many smiley people, it's ridiculous. It should be prescribed by doctors for people who are feeling a little bit down. It's um, in a time like we're living in at the moment, where everything seems a little bit upside down. Brexit or your Trump or the world in turmoil. Jump on the caravan, watch that, and it just doesn't feel too bad. Anyway, back on with the racing. Well, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's really kind of a, That's a good selection of beverages. And then this. Very nice. Mm. It's all about the B-roll. Dave, this is B-roll for the last shot. Lazy mid-afternoon uh, teeth brushing. <laughs> Dentists are expensive. <laughs> Look at that. I apologise about me air. That's what happens when you're on the caravan all day. Anyway, the tell would be really nice to me today. There could be a VIP pass, so I'm up here where all the uh, big wigs and that lot usually get to watch the race. It gives VIP tickets, so here we are. This is what it's like behind the scenes. And they're positioned, it's about 75, 50, 75 to metres away from the line. So you get the perfect view. You don't have to fight the crowd. And then today, because where it is on a bit of a loop, you get to see like 300 metres before the line and here and the corner. This is what my fourth tour. First time I've smuggled myself in here. Don't ever think I don't appreciate my job. I bloody well do. Something else. Cycling's awesome, isn't it? Okay, VIP treatment over now. I've got to go and find the team trucks, have a few chats with people, then get back to the press room. 
My foot, can you believe that? I've not even got a limousine today. Another day, another attempt to uh, find my way through the technical zone to finish. It's always such a maze. I always get lost. Uh, here we go. Another day, another mad scrum at the Team Sky bus to speak to Chris Froome. What's he like as a kid? Was he a bit of a troublemaker? Because he seems proper chilled. So some kids go, but I was quite a kid. I'm quite hyperactive now. There was a change when I was about 20. Was there anything that was it the opposite way around with Taylor? What prompted that change for you? Ready to go? Art. For me, okay, I did go. art college for four years. Oh yeah. So that that's prompted. Yeah, brought me out. But anyway, what what were you, were you different at all? Was he different? They're gonna go. Um, this one was jumping from roof to roof when he was a little kid. So now he's very chill. Yeah, yeah. The, the cycling's calmed him, has it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the luxury suite tonight. <laughs> so it's always a bit of a fight in the mornings to get riders when they get off the bus. But uh, the BMC team do something quite unique. They specify a window of 10 minutes every morning where the press can come up and interview riders. And what that does is it makes sure that uh, we get to speak to the riders we want to, but it also limits the time that the riders have to be available. So it works uh, for both parties, for the team and for the press. So the uh, press window is just about to open for BMC this morning. Uh, it's staged for Odez, which Greg Van Avermet won two years ago. So he's the big favourite again today. So we're going to go catch up with him and see what he has to say. Si vous avez la foi, allez dans le bus de pour vous we reached what stage is it? Ah, four minutes. Something like that. And I've lost count. And you've just been on stage, haven't you, Mr. Trevor? I have. I have. Okay, what's that for? Look at this. Twenty years hard labour. So it's like uh, what? Twenty years of working at the tour. Three years of journalism. Blooming, eh? You got. Are you proud? You got to be proud of that. It's good. It's Twenty-one, actually. They tried to give it to me last year. They stuffed up. Hey, so for you. No. Is that you got a proud moment being on stage? Very nice. Very nice. Okay, who gives you it? Uh, Christian Prudhomme. Right, the big man himself. Yeah, I told him that I was the Christian Prudhomme of the Jago Hills. I'm doing it. Which you are. It's, uh, <laughs> and that's getting bigger and bigger every year. Sky's been coming for two years now. Can we expect more things coming next year? Well, we've got a wonderful course which we've just finalised, we can't release it yet, but uh, and uh, hopefully a couple more uh, World Tour teams, so we're looking, yeah, we'll yeah. Happy, yeah. Right, we'll be there, cycling tips will be there, covering it like normal. Exactly. Philippe Gilbert, qui nous retrouve sur le podium, le champion belge, vous êtes venu au côté de lui, Michel, peut-être pour prendre la température pour... So the tour is really long. It's three and a half weeks of work and uh, you go through so many ups and downs in that time. Uh, you have some really good days, some really bad days, but most days you kind of have a mixture. You have some good moments and some bad moments. Um, today's been a bit of a flat day for the team. We've all been a bit low on energy and just struggling to get motivated a little bit. I think that's pretty normal. We're two weeks into the race and a week to go. so. Yeah, just trying to find a way through today and hopefully today, uh, tomorrow will be better. But um, yeah, just a bit of a hard one. So rather than catching the shuttle bus to the uh, finish line today, I thought I'd uh, walk down the kilometre and a bit to the finish just to get some fresh air and some sunshine and hopefully that'll uh, bring a bit of energy back. 24 k's to go. Thomas again off the front. Today we didn't think it would happen. We got to the point where we've had enough Buffalo Grill, haven't we? We need a rest day from Buffalo <laughs> Grill. Yeah, I've had more than enough. Um, I'm sure it's just manufactured. 
like they must just have these buffaloes that they just chop up that come from some my brain I'm uh, uh, <laughs> tired <laughs> grill we're parked outside some random house just uh, outside of Rodez we think it's the Airbnb for the night but really not sure um, you might be able to see out there Dave's kind of wandering around trying to find whether it is the right place trying to get on the phone to the owner can't find the kit looks the same as what it is on Airbnb eh? it said in the note the key was in the door mm. the small white door over there next to the, the gate on the left is it's that possibly it yeah that's, that's that entrance isn't it yeah there we hey, go. result. <laughs> Ta -da! We're in. We're in, lads. We're in. <laughs> result. And it's only 10 past 10. I'd better hurry up, but anyway, bit of bricky first. I'll get Matt some. Not Shane, because he can't do the old gluten, can he? And Matt always moans for don't bring anything back. Why me, Ozzy? Matt, I've, I've had a nice couple of croissants this morning. Uh, Look out, where's mine? <laughs> oh, in your face. Good. No, I haven't had any yet, but I've got right. some local um oh. I got some local prune things, prune croissants. Nice. I thought you were just trolling me, like half oh, I had croissants, you didn't, but no, you done well. Dave, you've had a little accreditation related mishap. Look at that. Yeah. I could lose that and then somebody with crap hair in my face could get in it dead easy. Make a virtual run. He's cut it short, so I'm going to second hole. Look at that, boy scout. Lucky you got that knife in the press centre in Shombury. <laughs> Please don't cut yourself. Comes a good one. I mean, I don't know how this guys look. I've done 120 miles or something, 150 miles. I don't get on a bike for a couple of days. These guys do it every day. Uh, it's one of the most challenging endurance individual sporting efforts in the world. And it's really tough stuff. So I think the respect for these guys is, I have, is enormous as athletes. Uh, and you have to get up and get out of bed and be willing to say, oh my God, I have another six day hours in, in the saddle here. That's my office. I'm going to work. Right. Here we go folks, I've made a little bit of a mistake, my fat fingers must have pressed the wrong button on the camera the other day, just putting the vlog together now and realise the quality is as if I've been filming it on a Nokia phone from sort of early 2000s at best. Sound quality is good though, so it's not all, uh, all of a loss. We're recording Matt. Here we are, GoPro approached me this morning, said Hey, all right, we like what you do on your vlogs and your Facebook live. So, can you do some stuff for us? Just some introduction to the stage. I was at like, certainly. I'm just gutted I don't have a cycling tips T-shirt on because this is going to be in like the ASO feed. Apparently, I try and squeeze cycling tips in there, though. I drop it in subtly. Sorry. What? Hey, um, I love you. I love you too. Um, uh, I heard some mumbling, and then, uh, and then all of a sudden, it's like, "Oi, are you deaf?" And then I look up, and it's Gilbert hollering at me, saying, he, "Saying he loves me." It's just nice, right? Like, I don't expect any of these guys to remember me. I meet hundreds of people every day, thousands of people all year. Well, ah, Come on out. Hello, it's Dave. Hi, it's Good coming. to meet you. Good to meet you. All right, lads, we're here. Stage 15. Yes, on five. Did you know that? Because I, I can admit, I am not familiar. What day is it? Where we're at? Where we are? We are Sunday, man. Sunday. You're not. Yeah, the time was too long. Why we work? No. We really are working. We give spectacular people. Yeah, like circus, you know? Do, do you know that you, we won the Team GC last, last day? Yesterday. Really? Uh, hey, you should know that, man. Follow us I to don't, the podium. I, I don't really follow the race. I just do stupid stuff to camera. <laughs> <laughs>
We have to go to pick up uh, our cows. No, yeah, no, it's the a cows. Podium. No, no, not that one. One of the podium. You also. get three cows. Yeah. Oh yeah, the little ones. Yeah. Second rest day of the tour and a much needed one really. I'm just riding a couple of towns away from where we're staying just to go grab some breakfast. So I got the backpack on, street clothes on, grab a couple of baguettes and uh, start the day off on the right foot. Check me out. I'm like totally French. Baguette. Oh, 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 oh. Baguettes for breakfast. The only way to have brekkie in France, isn't it? Baguettes and crap coffee. <laughs> Now tell us about this jam. There's a story behind this jam, isn't there? Hither, we got this off. It's from the last rest day when we, uh, the lovely family we were staying with, they gave us it. She was cooking it just as we were living. Oh, do you want some jam, lads? So it's been um, smouldering in the car for the past week, getting bubbly hot. <laughs> oh, what a lovely day. Uh, second rest day, and I've done so little. It's been great. Uh, just been sitting out here in the garden of this uh, little jeep that we're staying in. Just been reading a book and just chilling out really. Um, yeah, a much needed break after a long two weeks. Repeat what you just said, Matt, because that's star quality audio <laughs> I just said places as beautiful like this uh, remind me more of video games than anything else uh, so for gamers out there the Uncharted series is what it reminds me of jumping from rooftop to rooftop amazing vistas in beautiful old towns that's what it reminds me of looks not like Sonic <laughs> Mr Mega Drive Matt, has the tour really been that bad? Yeah. Mm. So what's that bottom left one say? 500 euro, five, well, six rooms, 150 square metre, with a garden. You could. And it's ancient if you look at it straight through. That'll be warm as in the winter and cool in the summer. Right, lads, we're going to open a cycle training camp here. <laughs> you could do, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. 500, that's ridiculous. Full house there for 700. 150 meters square. CT European offices. Let's get on it. That's mad. Hello, Wade. 